Dale E. Gillum is a man of his times. He is an active, recognized leader in the field of integrated program management. Presently, he is the program manager, EVM scheduling lead for SAIC. He is vice chair of the board of directors of the National Defense Industrial Association Integrated Program Management Division, and he's a leader in the College of Performance Management. You would say that all indicators are pointing up for Dale Gillum, but if you were to ask him, he would say his success is based upon the commitment of a small group of people over a long period of time in his life. I got to meet with him recently and we talked about it. We decided to break his life up into four quarters. I'd say the first quarter was, was just living, growing up as a military brat. My dad was in the Air Force. We moved every two to three years. So hmm. our- you know, which, which military brat? Air Force. Okay. So every couple of years we'd pick up, move around the country. So we became very tight as a family and got used to moving around, blending in, you know, meeting new, new folks, new friends, then moving on. And, you know, that tightened us as a family. Now, where are you in the family out as far as the oldest? And three younger sisters and, you know, grew up one of the girls, if you will, learning, you know, <laughs> about, about all that. And, you know, viewing them through how my dad grew up. Um, a, a big experience for me was both my parents grew up in the same small town in Pennsylvania. Uh -huh. So we actually have pictures of them when they're one year old in a swimming pool together because they lived, really? lived around the same little loop, as we so call it. I mean, it. they really lived in the same small town together. Yeah, went to school together, uh -huh. had pictures together when they were young. And part of the deal with, between my mom and dad was my mom said, I'm only going to marry you if you get out of here. So he okay. joined the military, joined the Air Force, and they moved out. And for us, it was interesting. The first time, first, my dad was the first person to go to college. And since then, he's got the master's degree and went further. Um, so we're the first people to break free, if you will. Um, so what, did he, what did he get his master's in? Uh, business okay and you know went through air war college and and everything in the military mm -hmm. um, so that was was a big deal and as far as an example for us you know it set the bar a little higher than what it was for a bunch of my cousins and, mm -hmm. and relatives and we always grew up envying our cousins because they had family they had people around cousins and relatives grew up envying us for for getting out of there yeah now yeah <laughs> yeah, so it's still interesting going. So, what was the name of the town? Alexandria, Pennsylvania. Yeah. yeah, so that was really the the first phase was getting an appreciation for where we came from, and what we value. You know what mm -hmm. I value, and and uh, it was interesting being one generation or you know a couple years removed from from the different lifestyles of of what you thought would be better versus what you were going through. Um, so it prepared me and my sisters well for adapting to new environments, new people, new situations. And, you know, in a, in a way, a parallel today in the business world is you go from program to program. Mm -hmm. um, so part of what I still struggle with is keeping that long term relationship, keeping connected with people, but also knowing you have to move on. Yeah. Right. You know, that's it's it's a parallel with what I grew up with. So okay, so we 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 got established. You your your family moved around. You um, that's one of the one of the characteristics you bring out of that is the fact you have a character you have a category for starting new programs, and right. building from there. But that one of the drawbacks can be the fact that you 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 don't have that experience of being in one thing for a long time. Right. Yeah. Right. That's pretty good. That's a perfect growing up was a perfect parallel for mm -hmm. the world that I work in. Yeah. You know, you, you try to connect with people with the intention of being all in, being focused, being committed to what needs to be done. But at the end of the day, either the program ends or you need to move on or higher priorities or, or things blow up that you got to focus on. Right. So, so that uh, was my childhood, you know, giving the bearing for being plugged in, but being able to disconnect and, mm -hmm. and move on. Um, and, uh, you know, growing up, uh, going through school and high school, I always did pretty well in school. I did even better at the stuff around school, mm -hmm. uh, just meeting people, 
I was the person in the lunchroom that could blend across the groups, you know, the jocks, the drama, you know, the different classes, the different groups of people. Thinking back to the military childhood, growing up and moving around, I learned how to blend in, be part of the different groups, but you also knew it was going to end, okay. you know, or that you'd have to move on or something would change. So when we, we finally settled down uh, in my high school years in Northern Virginia, my, my dad got out of the active duty uh, military and went in as a civilian uh, employee. And it was different because we finally were stable. We had no near term plan of moving. Mm -hmm. um, so I was able to be in one place for high school and went, went through that experience. So that's great. Yeah, it was, it was the first time that so all four, all what, four years. Yeah. All four years and, and even longer. Um, while I then went off to college, my mm -hmm. sisters went there and went through the same okay. high school. Well, that's nice. So it was, it was great stability. Um, and, and one other big part of, of growing up and it echoed the military environment was my active involvement in the boy scouts. Hmm. You know, when I looked back and when I applied to college and was applying to my first job, uh, you know, one of my big go-to experiences was what I did in the Boy Scouts. So as we moved around the country, Boy Scouts were big in, in the military environment. So did a lot of camping, a lot of outdoors activities. And one of the last places that we lived at before we moved to Virginia was Alaska. So I oh, had, really? Yeah. Wow. So I did all my teenage years. I did about three, three and a half years. Um, in Fairbanks, Alaska. Wow. So a lot of camping from 11 to 14. Yeah. Early Boy Scout um, activity. See. Both my mom and my dad had been den leaders, Cub Scout oh, wow. leaders, Boy Scout leaders throughout the years. Many, you know, camping endeavors and every Air Force base we moved to getting reengaged. So I went through all that and the momentum was clearly, they were supportive. It was destined to be that I'd be an Eagle Scout. And I had gotten a lot of things completed really early in the cycles at the time. And then we moved from Alaska to Virginia just as I was about to go into high school. Okay. And at that point, with, with that transition, that dynamic, I said, I'm, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do it. And all I had left was two merit badges in the oh. service project. Oh. And as much as my parents had been advocates and supporters of, of my whole Boy Scout career, you know, back to Cub Scouts and Weeblos, they were supportive of me not doing it. Oh, wow. So it was, a, it was a big life lesson because I wasn't going to do it. Went into mm -hmm. high school, went on that path of, you know, those challenges, those transitions. And fortunately, in... I, I woke up in my junior year and said, you know, that, that's not right. And, and my parents had given up a long time before that I'd actually closed it out. So I rejoined a troop, went camp and went all in with that experience and finished out the, the badges. Um, did my service project at a church building an outdoor amphitheater. Oh, cool. Um, had, actually had my eagle ceremony at the, no, did the, you, no, the outdoor no, theater. Got to slow down on that. See, did you design it? And yeah, designed it. Uh, typical nature went a little overboard, all in. Yeah. Uh, a little optimistic on you know what we could do, and we pulled it off. It was a lot of work. Did you have other people working on the project with you? Oh, yeah. The whole troop. Scout wow. masters. Wow. And it was for a church, so you had sure. a lot, uh, which is... But it was your project. Oh, yeah. So it was your yeah. first project management job. Yeah, my first project hey. management. All right. And, right. and it's still there. Oh, well, how was your schedule variance on it? It was, yeah. <laughs> it was we didn't, we didn't have a baseline, so oh. it was all good. <laughs> it was yeah. the optimism of getting it done, and yeah. you just sometimes have to believe and, and do it. Yeah, that's um, great. And it's still there, which is what's great. great. Still and, being used? And now, yes, and now that we've moved back to the area, um, once in a while we'll drive down and I'll yeah. go in and just appreciate the moment and the it's still there that's great all the wooden benches the you know stage and the outdoor area so I, that i would imagine that when you look back that was a real a real like a baseline significant moment in your life to get that it was there. a very significant moment yeah. um even if i hadn't achieved eagle scout and you know came out with that big experience yeah the whole life's the support from my parents the family support the 
the many camping trips with my family, with my mm -hmm. dad, that then led to my family going on, on more camping um, in itself would have been worthwhile. Yeah. Then the fact that I nearly gave up on, on that path, even though I didn't have any appreciation for what it could mean to achieve that kind of outcome and having my parents support for giving up on it was, mm -hmm. was interesting looking back. I almost still don't understand it. Mm -hmm. Um, but then I don't know why I woke up and why, what prompted me to go, I need to go finish this. Through high school, was a decent student, you know, didn't over excel at anything, uh, was very big on interactions with people, but didn't do a whole lot of extracurricular activities um, or things to really shine and didn't really have a plan for college. So when I got to the point of graduating, I said, okay, I'm going to apply, applied to a couple schools, got into one and went to school there. Which and is? Radford University. Okay. And where is that? Uh, down in Radford, Virginia, near Roanoke, okay. Virginia. Okay. All right. And uh, had only applied to two schools. That was one of the two I got well, in. You had 50% retreat. Yeah. yeah it, was, it was my safety school, I guess. Yeah. But, All right. Um, uh, got into school there, and then it opened up a whole nother world to me, uh, which was good and bad. You know, it, was, mm -hmm. it's, it, it makes me uh, concerned with my daughters getting close to that point. Sure. Um, uh, it was it was interesting, and and then my first year of school, I continued the traje trajectory that I was on. You know, I did good enough. I didn't didn't do well, but didn't have a plan. Had some friends that weren't invited back for their sophomore year Ooh. and had others that just weren't taking it serious. And after my freshman year was when I had an epiphany, my wake up call that said, look, you're going to have to do this. You're either going to head down the path. Some of them went, or you're just going to cycle through four or five years and not get out of it what you can. And that's when I turned the corner ever since then. You know, so it was seeing other people maybe they kind of woke you up to what could happen to you is that right pretty much it people that you had some kind of relationship yeah with? seeing people that i cared about getting kicked out seeing people yeah, okay. that i cared about not taking it seriously yeah okay and i hadn't really thought about so it what, that what was that gear change was it a radically big difference in, in as far as your commitment and your concentration and your achievement and all that or it was a world of difference wow and what's interesting to draw a parallel to the eagle scout experience i did well enough where i wasn't getting added pressure from the family or the parents um, i was also taking out student loans so the debt was building and part of what i realized was i'm gonna have to put the time in hmm. if i'm gonna do this and graduate what am i gonna get out of it and it was that moment of deciding to take it serious. And that was over the summer after my freshman year. And from that point forward, nearly every class I got an A in. Wow. I went back and retook courses from my freshman year because I had two biology courses that I didn't do too well in. So you always had the capabilities. It was there, right? Correct. But it was just there was something that was just not, something that had not quite what quite Right, it. right. And it wasn't necessarily a motivation yeah because I, I did a lot it was yeah. just focusing it yeah. focusing the energy fascinating isn't it? yeah wow so how does that how does that what's the life what's the life lesson in that that you carried from you from those days as far as things you do now and thinking about how you commit to what you're working on and right put the other things aside and all that like how, how do you carry that into this life it's it's a great parallel to what I do in this life where when you do something, you do it. You focus on it. You go okay. all in. And I'm I'm known for that. I'm very good at that. My challenge is knowing when to stop and focus on something else or transition to something okay. else. So uh, wrapping up the college experience, um, I did did well. Uh, graduated with you know triple major, double minor. Congratulations! Wow. Yeah. Well. Pretty cool. Yeah. It was it was it was an achievement in itself. But what, I, was your, sorry, what was your degree in? Uh, three variations of business. Okay. Uh, there's uh, finance, uh, business management, and organizational management. Hmm. And my minors were in English and economics. Now, I bet, I bet all of those have 
you have to have drawn drawn on that all that those I, one day, one way or another. I have the interesting point though is it sounds great or can sound good going ahead triple major double minor. When you actually look at those, it's not that I got three majors and two minors. Yeah. It's that well, if you're gonna get a major, you know, and you have I'm sorry, if you're gonna get a major and you have some interest in other areas, if you add a couple extra classes in. You can get a minor in something else if you like to read English, for example. Right. Um, then, if you like to do other business classes, it doesn't take that much to add organizations. So sure. you, it's not three times or five times the workload; it's adding a little bit more. So that sets up the stage for my later career, where if I'm going to do be involved in one organization, and it takes a little bit more effort to be in, involved in another organization in another. All of a sudden, you're involved in a bunch of different organizations that gives you the ability to influence them and align them. Where if you did one, you know you wouldn't have that added ability. But there also has to be an overlapping of, of relevance and Correct. focus and that alignment. Kind of yeah. yeah, right. And that's not always clear. Sure. And that's where I've tried to focus on trying to find new alignments, new value, new ways to bring people together. Uh, so when, when I started my career after college, uh, applied to a bunch of different places, uh, had some job offers in, in different career fields, uh, really sat back and looked hard at those and decided, did I want to sell life insurance? Did I want to want to go down some of the uh, paths that, that I was being given offers on? And I said no. So I targeted some companies and industries I wanted to work in and actually went through a temporary company. And this is in Virginia? This is in Virginia okay, okay. to get my foot in the door because I, I didn't think insurance and some sure. of the others right. were the path I wanted to be in. Right, right. So I went through a temporary company to get my foot in the door at a defense and federal government okay. contractor. Never and, knowing what you were getting into. Yeah, never knowing. <laughs> Little did I know. Little here, did I know. Here, here we are. Yeah. Um, but knowing with my dad's background in the military and having sure. lived around that, you know, it's a big industry, it's a good career path, you're giving back. Um, so got my foot in the door, started working there, proved myself, got hired, and then the opportunity opened up. Now to, what year are we in? So we're in 1996. Okay, all right. So the opportunity then, and part of why I also pursued the, the one company was they supported Spay War, a Navy IT command, mm -hmm. and they were part of the BRAC relocation program moving from Crystal City, Virginia to San Diego. Oh. So I was on the cusp of getting married mm. and thought that would be a great opportunity to get married, move to San Diego, create mm -hmm. our own identity, live there for two or three years and move back. Right. So we, we got married and her, she grew up similar, parallel, uh, father in the Air Force, military brat, moved around, ended mm -hmm. up there for high school, so same place, and uh, moved to San Diego as part of the BRAC relocation to create our own identity. Hmm. And the goal was to live out there for two to three years, then get our identity and move back. Nine years later, <laughs> With two kids in tow. That kind of changes things. <laughs> yeah, it sure does. Wow. Uh, we still had uh, her parents, brother, and a number of my relatives, sisters, and parents back in the D.C. area. Mm -hmm. So we packaged up everyone. And now, what was the catalyst for the move, though? Like, what, is this career career-related move? No, the, the catalyst for the move from San Diego to back to Northern Virginia was the, the reality that we had two daughters. Right. And, and the real concern was they're growing up. If we don't move, we're never going to do it. Sure. We'd already been out there nine years. Well, where are you in your career, though, at this time? What, what are you doing? It, I, I was... Uh, con I was a contractor, government con in this at this time in my career. I was a government contractor, uh -huh. uh, moving from program to program, helping them out. Still for Spay War headquarters. Okay, so is this? Are you even anywhere near close to earned value management yet? Or yes. Okay. So uh, the early parts of my career, I started out in 
disciplines within earned value management. Oh, okay. Cost estimating, scheduling. Okay, so it really has been your whole career. Oh yeah, it okay. has. I yeah, in the early that. part, before I even knew it was a career. Okay, yeah. <laughs> the early part of my career was in those, those different disciplines. Okay. And I have a bit of a eclectic nature where similar to how I grew up and, and those other experiences I shared, you know, I can see the benefit and depths and teams and functional disciplines and practices. And then I step back and try to figure out how to bring them together. Sure. So I was doing earned value management before I even knew it was a career, before okay. I even knew what it was or what it existed. And and in that and then in in you were doing earned value management as a in what capacity? In what I consider the pr uh, project management. So you were, at, you were at a project management. Yes. Yeah. For, you were doing that now. Right. So okay. what I was supporting my customers in acquisition management, okay. government project okay. management. Okay. Um, in some cases, we did earn value management reporting. You know, okay. more focused on the data. Uh, but I was more focused on the discipline okay. that if you're going to plan. If you're going to do co good cost estimating, have quality built into what you're doing, execute work the way that you're intending to, it to be done, forecasting, that that's all different parts of the same whole. So I was doing the processes of what I now focus on as earned value management. So it was really integrated program management. It was. It was yeah. much more than just earned value management. Correct. Yeah. And, and Correct. that's... You know, the good and the bad of, of earned value management is it has a reputation, has a stigma. For me, it's always stepping back from that and focusing on how do you plan, how do you execute. So we moved to then back to Northern Virginia in 2005 and okay. reconnected with the family. That's when I, I was part of the corporate organization at the company mm -hmm. and, you know, got to set the stage for what I've, what I've become now professionally, hmm. um, formally being responsible for working from program to program, mm -hmm. putting policy practices, oversight hmm. in place. Nice. So, so in, for, for me in that move from the West coast to the East coast, we did it for a family reason, you know, to reconnect before our, our children got too old. Part of it was I'd worked out with my employer that move from supporting external customers to being focused internally on the corporate organization. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a great transition. Uh, my bosses at the time were excellent, you know, very supportive. It helped them out because we had a West Coast, East Coast presence. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have to travel as much and yeah. got to reconnect with the family. Okay. All right. So now that's... We're, we're, so this is right in that 2005 as I moved. To okay, now we're, we're kind of like coming into yeah, the... Yeah, we're coming into, into where I'm now. at now. now. Okay. Yeah, so okay. that's really everything Everything since that move is, is the now. Okay. Um, different variations, different experiences. Uh, every time I think I've learned something, I just get my eyes open to what I have yet to learn. Sure. So it's, it's an interesting experience and, and sometimes I wish I could have told myself what was to come mm -hmm. and I look back and think about what would I have told myself then to better prepare myself for today and that's what I want to know what would you have told yourself I've thought a lot about that and I don't think I would have told myself anything because I don't know that I would have heard it I don't know if I would have understood it. And I'm also concerned that it would have a different impact on where I am today. Okay. What I'm very interested in is what would I tell myself 10 years from now? Mm. Okay. And I've thought a lot about that and, and have had different ideas of ways that I could do that. And so you're kind of applying that to looking off into the future so that you can affect now. In a way. Or that I could use now to affect the future. Right. Because I won't remember then what I'm thinking now, what I'm feeling now. Right. And while there's things I would, you know, while there's things I would like to do, have done differently in the past, or programs I failed on, things that, that I uh, could have 
you know, speeded up the learning curve. I do think I needed to go through those experiences. The person who is watching with us right now, is, if they're watching, one of the, it's likely they want to know what makes it work for you. Right. And they try to compare where they're at in their own development of their own career and right. relationship to where you're at. And they're trying to glean some wisdom right. from this, okay? okay? So in what what ways, I know it's, it's it's hard to to speak in some fashion that that isn't just become academic or something, right. not really practical. But, but I, I'm just thinking if there was someone that is just maybe has got all the maybe things in order, things are working for them, right. but they're just really young in in, in, right. their, in their program managing experience. Do you have anybody that you that you work with that you like you mentor? Right. Or, or, like, can you? How do you? How what do you kind do of the, advice? How do you do the mentoring? Them? Yeah. 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 Is that right to be going to that now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So uh, advice that I'd give to myself or, or people that I was mentoring yeah. is to try. Do the best you can. Yeah. Push forward. There's going to be plenty of people telling you different ways you could have done it. No mm -hmm. matter what you do, there's going to be people. You're going to be criticizing yourself on why didn't I do this? Why didn't I do that? But at the end of the day, that's always going to be there. Mm -hmm. So you need to keep moving. You can't let that hold you down. You need to keep treading water. You need to swim up current sometimes. At some point, you'll get smart enough to swim with the current or, or pick when you need to, to do either. Um, the goal is to keep moving. Do the best you can. If you misstep, you do something politically wrong, you didn't bet something with someone that, in hindsight, you know, that, that bites you, you'll learn from next time and for next time and decide maybe I'll take a slightly different course, mm -hmm. but keep moving. With that thought, we'll, we'll kind of pick on that in a couple ways. To, uh, in some instances, sometimes the best time is just to say, you know what, it's time for me to pull up stakes and just start somewhere place else, learning, right. from my, learning from my mistakes. But that's not kind of your, that's really not your background. I mean, you, you, you're no. not one of those folks. You didn't no. pull up stakes. You're, did no. you? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I hear from a lot of people. Sometimes it's best to know when to, to quit, to right. fold the cards. Is it ever go. good to quit? It's never been for me. Okay. There's been times I've been pushed to what I think is my edge that I, I don't know how to go further, but I also don't know how to quit. And okay. you just keep pushing through. And I've had to rely on people to give me advice, give me mentorship. It's been an interesting experience. People who I used to be close with, I'm not close with now professionally. People who used to give me the hardest time are some of my biggest supporters now. Yeah. It's, it blows my mind every time I turn around. With that thought, yeah. these are good. So have you ever been in a, case, in a situation where you have attempted to rebuild a bridge? Yeah. I talk, talk, how, how did it go? Or, or how is it going in rebuilding bridges? Yeah. The, the rebuilding of bridges is so important, but what's been difficult for me is accepting that it's okay to burn bridges sometimes. Talk about that then. So my nature, one of, one of my Achilles heels is the goal of consensus, getting people on board. And I consistently learn and relearn that oftentimes people aren't in the same place at the same time, open to the same direction for the betterment of the community or, or whatever mm -hmm. it is you're working. And sometimes it's just not going to work and it kills me. It hurts me. It pains me. And I just deal with that. You, you, you can't give up on being a human being. You cannot. But you, at the same time, you have to understand some things just don't work. Is Correct. It, is it that combination? It is that combination. And sometimes when I see how other people operate, I, I envy their ability to cut the cord or cut people off or close things down because I, I can't do that hmm. the way that I see others do it. Huh. You know, I always want to look for the best, look for the outcome that that can help where we collectively need to be. That's the Eagle Scout in you, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the challenge of, you know, and I wouldn't give it up. The pain it causes me at times to not be able to 
say no or sure. tell people they're they're off kilter or it's, they're not right because I know at the end of the day we're all not right mm -hmm. at any given moment mm -hmm. and we it's just trying to figure out how to line up the people with the timing with where you need them to be yeah and I you have to hold that optimism that you can get them there that you collectively can get to so it. I hear what I'm hearing is a leader who is connecting your career with the fact that you've got people who are in this with you. Is that right. what I'm hearing? Right. Correct. And that you're, Correct. It's, a, it's an us thing you're thinking. You're Correct. Right. It's yeah. a responsibility to the community. Okay. So I, we call this success stories and it's for a good reason. And, and is that everyone would like, I know I do, I like to listen to people tell, tell their story in the sense, you know, there was a battle and, you know, it wasn't right. easy. And sometimes I even wondered if I could make it the next, make it the next step right. and all that. Like, how would you, how would you characterize success to you? What, what, what is, what is your definition of success, the one that works for you? I'm still looking for it. I got a long edit here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, um, is that too tough a question? Uh, it's a very tough question because... I mean, let me, let me say another yeah. way. Let me make it easy. I would bet that anyone who knows you has been around you long enough would say that it would seem that you're at peace with yourself. Hmm. That you give that impression. Right. Um, it seems like you have things in, in order personally well enough that you're able to give attention to other people and be aware of them right. and, and to try to consider them. And I think that that would indicate someone who seems to have a, a sense of personal accomplishment that gives, gives him a personal strength. That's, that you kind of like, you, you kind of give off that kind of a perspective to people. Does that surprise you or is that, is that, is that how you kind of see yourself or? It doesn't surprise me okay. hearing that okay. because I get that from a lot of people and I appreciate that. In many ways, it's 180 out from how I feel and what drives me, you mm -hmm. know, the desire to do good, the desire to be accepted, mm -hmm. uh, the desire to connect with people. Think mm -hmm. back to my childhood moving every two to three years, pulling up roots, having to start over. Sure, yeah. So I'm still looking for that, that Pennsylvania lifelong set of relationships. Okay, well, there you go. That's interesting, yeah. So who's your who's your hero? Who's the one that, that like when you hold up your, I'm gonna, not like I'm gonna be like, hey, when I grow up, I think we're past that, but like, like who are people that like represent to you a something that you remember what they did or how they did it that, that challenges you? Well, you got anybody in mind? There's people that I think of, I read a, a good bit, you know, about history and different facets of people who did great things. That's an easy default for me to go down that path. But when I step back from that, there's a difference between who did great things versus who did things well. Hmm. You know, who did good things hmm. and who are good people. That's a hmm. whole different discussion. Right. And when I think about Will I be remembered? Mm -hmm. Probably not. You know, will any of us be? Mm -hmm. You know, they'll, they'll be our initial family and friends and those of us we touched in our professional life that that's what it's about. Yeah, you know, those absolutely. that you can have a chance to give impact to. Right. So the people that there's, you know, my parents and grandparents and others that, you know, I appreciate the impact that they've had on me. There's people professionally or, or career-wise uh, that I look at and admire. And as I've gotten to know, I've realized they're equally flawed, equally human as the rest of us. So mm. it's, a, it's a good and bad dynamic in the sense that it's great to see they're human and have the balance, but it's also seeing your heroes be human. You're a program manager, right? Yes. I mean, that's kind of a core right. perspective of who you are. Right. So, are, are you a person that plans in his life? Do you, do you plan ahead? Do you have a idea of where you're headed? Very good question. My whole life, especially after that first year of college, when I said, "This is it. This is the limited time you have. What are you going to do?" From there on, it was planned. Everything as I accomplished things and set out my goals and accomplished all of them evolved as I encounter new situations and new opportunities and I'm at that point of figuring out what's next. Hmm. 
because I've accomplished everything I had set okay, out. So you're, to you're, you're, okay, that's fascinating. Yeah. So in, in that regard, in that way, we could say, you know, everything's qualified, but to a degree, you've right. succeeded, right? I mean, at, at, well, I've right. accomplished what I planned to. Right, okay, right. So what, what right. looking at it from a whole different viewpoint, what drives you nuts? I mean, it related right. to business. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> what, so what drives me nuts is the thing that I focus the most on is trying to figure out how to bring people together, to align them to the goal at the right time, the right focus, to get people to be as productive as they can be. Mm -hmm. Not to be in the same place a year from now, two years from now, trying to tackle what we could have solved six months ago. But when I, so in, in that there's a kind of an assumption that you're saying that it's not always successful to get, to get, to get people. That's correct. Yeah. Successful. It's very difficult. Some people just like to talk or like to hear the noise or be part of the journey. They're, they're not as focused on the outcome mm -hmm. and the challenge is that balance. Sometimes the journey is as important as the outcome. And, and that's an important aspect of being a leader is realizing it and making sure people go on the needed journey to get them to a mm -hmm. shared outcome. If your wife was sitting here and I was interviewing her, what would she say are your, the strongest, your strongest characteristics? <laughs> I mean, you, you probably have some idea what she thinks. Right. Listening to people and figuring out how to bring them together. I do it within the families, within her family, within mine. That's my role. So can you give a name to that? Is it you're a peacemaker or are you a, 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 a goal setter or a, a what, 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 how, how do you, how would you capture what that characteristic is? So the term that comes to mind is empathetic. I bring people together and I do that through hearing what their story is, what their pain is, and figuring out how to solve that by working with others. And then count, balance that with what you expect of people. Like you, you, you expect people to be productive, right? To, to be part of it. Okay. And that's a challenge with teams. You know, work is one part of our life and we all have other challenges, health challenges, family challenges mm -hmm. that pull you in other directions. Mm -hmm. So no matter whether you're looking at the dynamics from a work perspective or personal perspective or individual perspective to get people aligned at the right time, focused on, on a shared goal or journey is very difficult. It's very rare when you get that moment of alignment. You worked on any programs that just plain old no matter how hard you tried the program, <laughs> the program just went south. Absolutely. Could, could, could talk about that view just uh, I had a number of them. <laughs> so, uh, good and bad. I've done my best, and my best has evolved over the years. Um, but focused on pure compliance, have gone in objectively. This is what needs done. This is what the customer wants done or needs done but haven't taken into account the human dynamic, the personal dynamic, hmm. as much as I should have or could have at that time. Hmm. If you had one minute with a group of uh, aspiring project managers, or program managers, one minute, like, like something that they, you want them to walk away with, what would, be, what, what would it be that you'd say? If I had a minute with project managers, I'd tell them that the important thing initially is to do things well. And the challenge that you have is to make sure you're doing the right things well. Getting the team to support and be aligned to get the outcomes that you need is key. To Dale Gillum, success is having the right people doing the right things at the right time. Leaders are responsible for keeping those three critical aspects properly aligned. When a leader can understand and align these three aspects, it enables people, projects, and outcomes to be the best they can be.